The diet drug craze is gripping our country. Wildly popular brands like Ozempic and Wagovi, they have become household names. Patients point to pounds lost and, yes, lives change. But there's a darker side to what is happening as the demand for those drugs is skyrocketing. Manufacturers are, manufacturers rather, are struggling to keep up. And now there's been an explosion of markets eager to fill that void. And they have found a population desperate for a weight loss solution even if that weight loss solution is sold on the streets. The Food and Drug Administration is warning consumers about the risks that come with shopping for those alternate drugs online, also pointing to the reports of people getting sick, and yes, in some cases, winding up inside hospitals. Scripps News National Investigative Correspondent Katie Beck has been digging into this for months. Here's her exclusive report. People come to New Orleans for the music and the nightlife. Hey, are you Melanie? Yeah. But we came here to explore a shadow market for diet drugs. You can come up here. Wearing a hidden camera, I stepped inside a van at a local city park. I had contacted this woman, Melanie Burris, through her website. She provides IV fluids for hangovers, but also advertises prescription drugs to lose weight that are FDA approved. Only the fine print below says they aren't. I filled out this brief online form which included questions about any other medications I'm taking and my medical history. We spoke for about 10 minutes by phone and arranged to meet in person. Have you done any injections before? No. Okay. She lays out on her table four injectable shots, along with a promise they'll deliver quick weight loss results. It's just gonna decrease your appetite. You're not gonna think about eating. Okay, okay. <laughs> now, um, in about two weeks, if you don't feel any different, let me know, but usually you'll feel it within 24 hours of injecting. The shots, she says, are pre-filled with the substance known as semaglutide. That's the active ingredient in FDA-approved brand names like Ozempic that slow digestion and suppress the appetite. So you're yeah. going to just, you know, squeeze alcohol swab, push it in and push the plunger. Okay. Uh, very simple. Before we arrived, we had searched Louisiana state records and found a Melanie Burris listed as a registered nurse. Registered nurses are not permitted to prescribe drugs in any state. Mel, are you a doctor yourself or are you I'm a, a nurse. So um, are you the kind that can write your own script? Can you write your own prescriptions or how do you? So it's me and a doctor. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, and so you so guys she, run this together? Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, and, and you can just take it anywhere? It shows on the road? Yep. Wow, do you get, yeah. are you stay pretty busy? Very busy. Okay. In less than 10 minutes, the transaction is done. I walk away with an envelope of syringes filled with what I'm told are prescription drugs. My name's not on it, and neither is the doctor's name who prescribed the drug to me, a doctor I've never spoken to and whose identity remains a mystery. I just bought a weight loss drug, a prescribed weight loss drug, out of a van for $200. Walking up to a van in New Orleans is not how things are supposed to happen in the word ethics. Derek Lowe has spent nearly 35 years working in drug discovery for pharmaceutical companies and has studied diet drugs. You don't know under what conditions these things, these needles were filled. You don't know what's really in them. It's probably semaglutide, but that's not a great basis on which to inject things into your body. And you certainly don't know if these syringes were sterile, how they've been stored, if they might be contaminated with something inadvertently. Who, who the hell knows? What? Social media is flooded with transformational stories about extreme weight loss. And celebrities like Oprah have championed the benefits of this new class of drugs. But the ongoing shortage of the FDA-approved medicine, along with its high cost, has sent many searching for cheaper alternate versions online, which they hope will have the same effect. The FDA has warned patients to be careful about doing that, writing that some alternate versions of semaglutide may be counterfeit, which means they could contain the wrong ingredients, contain too little, too much, or no active ingredient at all, or contain other harmful ingredients. 
We learned the FDA received over 100 reports of adverse events experienced by people who used alternate versions of semaglutide for weight loss in 2023. In 83 percent of those cases, patients had serious outcomes such as hospitalization, disability, and even death. There is a black market because, of course, there are people who are just selling this stuff online or in person or however, and God only knows what they're selling. In our investigation, we found a wide range of semaglutide sellers online, catering to people who want diet drugs shipped directly to their home. The sellers offer discounts and promise results for under $200 a month, which is a lot less than the $1,200 price tag for the branded drugs. We attempted to purchase semaglutide from a company called Synergy Health. And unlike our experience with Melanie Burris, we spoke directly to a doctor by phone. She said, based on my height and weight, I didn't qualify for semaglutide and wouldn't prescribe it to me. Before we aired this report, we wanted to meet Melanie Burris again to give her a chance to explain the business she's running out of her van. I am a journalist mm -hmm. and I'm working on a story and I'm exploring how people get weight loss drugs. It's like she answered my questions and, and said she's helped people lose incredible amounts of weight, improve their health, even without ever being seen by a doctor. Could you see how there would be people who would think that's risky like to not the be telehealth well to not be seen by a doctor and like like in my case like I came here I wasn't seen by a doctor I got the medication I walked away you know what I mean mm -hmm. is there some inherent risk in that um I guess you know yeah she told us she gets her medicine from a reliable source, an FDA-registered pharmacy out of Texas, and she said she could prove it. I have a prescription with your name on it, but I didn't bring it. Um, but I can give that to you next time, like the actual prescription box with your name on it. Okay. Despite our repeated request, she never provided us with any paperwork that revealed the doctor's name who wrote my prescription or where my drugs came from. We did not test the injections she sold us to know exactly what's inside of them, but she insists her business is safe. What happens once they send you the semaglutide? What happens? You draw the... Mm -hmm. And any worries about sterilization or contamination when you do that? No, because it's not a sterile procedure. You know, I'm not doing a procedure. But you would defend what you do? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Just because of the results I see in people, they're able to get off of all these other medications. Yeah, I just remember her in that purple. We took what we had found to State Representative Jason Hughes. He's a member of the Health and Welfare Committee in Louisiana's House of Representatives. I walked away with it without ever seeing a doctor or having a prescription with my name on it. I mean, is that problematic to you? Um, that's actually terrifying. We could have a lot of residents attempting to solve one problem, a weight loss issue, but could really find themselves in the emergency room in ICU or unfortunately dead um, because we don't know what's in those files. We pointed Hughes to the FDA data we had uncovered about adverse events. So when you think about the fact that the access is what the access is and those outcomes are as serious as they are. You should not be able to just walk up to a van to a corner grocery store um, and access these drugs. Um, you should have to consult your primary care physician. You should have to get a prescription uh, from uh, your doctor. Hughes says he plans to sound the alarm about the problem we've uncovered during the upcoming legislative session. We have an obligation uh, to crack down on this issue, to regulate this issue, um, because it would potentially save lives. Now, as of today, Melanie Burris, this business is still selling weight loss drugs online. Upon our return visit to New Orleans, she told us the company has added an extra layer of screening, a third party that requires a telehealth visit for patients with a doctor. However, she says the same mystery doctor that she has been working with will be the ones writing the prescription. Katie, I still see that FDA report and your investigation and that single word died. Uh, stay with us. We're going to take a break. When we come back, a much deeper dive into what you just saw with Katie Beck. Stay with us. There's all. If you don't know under what conditions these things, these needles were filled, you don't know 
what's really in them. It's probably semaglutide, but that's not a great basis on which to inject things into your body. And you certainly don't know if these syringes were sterile, how they've been stored, if they might be contaminated with something inadvertently. Who, who the hell knows? We continue now our coverage of what experts are calling the shadow market for diet drugs. Well, Govi, Ozempic, all of us have heard of them. They're popular ways for lots of people to lose weight. But there's been a growing trend of other markets trying to fill the void for manufacturers who are struggling to keep up with demand. Scripps News National Investigative Correspondent Katie Beck is back with us. And Katie, your story is eye-opening, and that is saying the very least. When you went back, I have to ask, was Melanie surprised to find out that you were an investigative reporter, especially with a camera person in tow? Well, Del, if she was surprised or agitated by that information, she certainly didn't convey it to us. She very calmly answered all of our questions and allowed us to film her, didn't tell us to turn the camera off or try and end the conversation. She was defensive of her practice and the safety behind it and said that patients have really benefited uh, from this medication. She's seen tremendous results in terms of weight loss and overall health benefit. And I should add that in order to test this market, we really did try and offer as much transparency as we could. We used my real name, my real height, my real weight, my real address. All of that information was authentic the whole way through this piece. And that was, that was part of why we were testing this, to see where these boundaries were and what the access truly was. Katie, I was stunned that you used your real name, by the way. So how common is this, being able to buy alternative versions of, of prescription diet drugs actually sold off the street in a van? Well, th there's tons of online retailers. There's also a lot of med spas and weight loss clinics that are offering semaglutide. And the truth of the matter is when these brand name drugs are in shortage, the FDA allows certain pharmacies called compounding pharmacies to create these alternate versions of the drugs as long as they comply with a very strict set of rules. Unfortunately, though, because the demand is so astronomical in this case and because the supply is so short, there are going to be some bad actors and opportunists out there, experts say, that really try and take advantage of this market that they say should certainly be more regulated. Katie yeah. Beck joining us tonight. Eye-opening might be the understatement. I want to bring in medical weight loss no, doctor, Dr. Sue Dakotas. And, and doctor, you are a triple board certified physician in New York City. Your bread and butter is weight loss. This is big business. Are we looking at the wild, wild west of weight loss now? It can be, but I think, you know, in New York City where I practice, patients are pretty savvy. I mean, I don't think my patients are going to get something online from someone they don't know. They're not going to buy something from a van on the street. They're really going to be very careful. I mean, they're not going to just inject themselves with something. They do their research. I mean, they check me out from head to toe. But yes, I mean, I think people that are perhaps not that sophisticated, people that are desperate uh, just to lose weight, perhaps people that are looking for something cheap, you know, because these medications, when they're the real medications are very expensive so if someone is looking for a bargain maybe they could be suckered in by into one of these sites doctor if you want to know the market that's out there just go to mexico where on every street corner there is a drug store that is advertising things that you can't get in the united states without a prescription from someone like you how much money are these physicians making off of, of these diet drugs i guess in, in this shadow market Yes, I mean, it's hard to know who's really running this. I mean, perhaps the drug cartels are running this. We don't even know if a, if a real physician is making any money on it. But if he or she is, then shame on them, because it's certainly very, very dangerous. So I think it's really just a matter of educating the public. You don't know what you're putting into your body. It could be very, very dangerous. What if there's fentanyl in there? I want to back up to something that we saw in Katie's uh, investigation. She walked out. She had the drug. There was no prescription. Her name was not on the envelope. How many alarm bells went off as you were watching that investigation? Yeah, I mean, that's really crazy. I mean, your name isn't on the prescription. You don't know who this person is. Um, I can't imagine uh, too many people wanting to subject themselves to that. These, I just think that's incredible. Yeah, these drugs started out to address diabetes. Um, do we know that they are safe for the reasons that they are being used for? And, and before you talk about uh, Wagovi or Ozempic, what about these drugs that are being sold out of vans? 
in, 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 in streets in New Orleans? Yeah, I mean, if they have to be sold out of out of a van, something's got to be wrong. I mean, I think just use some common sense. Why would you want to take something like that? How much real-world clinical data can there be when we're talking about a craze that really is less than two years old? Yeah, I mean, I just think it's important for people to really be aware. And the other thing that I'm concerned about is people that are going on to these online platforms, correct? They may be legitimate, really, but are they really getting the proper care? So even if the drug that they're getting is the real drug, how well are they being monitored? Dr. So Nicholas. in my practice, I put everybody on a body composition scale in the beginning and throughout their weight loss. I need to know what's happening. I want to make sure that they're losing fat, that they're maintaining muscle, and that they're maintaining adequate hydration. Uh, talk because to me. these drugs can cause incredible dehydration. For every ounce of fat that you burn, you're bur you burn you're actually losing water. With all of these drugs, Ozempic, which is semaglutide, Terzepatide, which is Monjaro, and Zekbound, all of these drugs can cause a lot of dehydration. If someone is dehydrated when they're taking these drugs, they're not going to burn fat and they're going to lose muscle. And that's why you have a lot of people complaining about the fact that they gained all the weight back. That's probably because they didn't actually lose body fat. So, so I really think there has to be a lot of hands-on care uh, with these medications. Even some legitimate doctors are not using a body composition scale because they don't specialize in weight loss. They're not used to using it. They're just writing a drug. They might be giving patients some good advice, but they don't really know how well the patient is actually doing. And there are so many positive effects to using this medication. You know, it's also an anti-aging medication because when you are balancing insulin, you're doing so many good things for your body. But give it's, me... It's good for cardiac health. Are you... Versus uh, fatty liver. Yeah, I, I want to um, get this really in. It really relieves a lot of brain fog that people might feel as they're getting older. Um, as well as helping them lose fat. And as, as we know, these drugs were initially started to treat type 2 diabetes. So there are so many incredible effects when these drugs are used properly. But it just really frustrates me to see so many people who are not getting the right care. Dr. Sue Dakotis, uh, I want to thank you very much for being with us, especially your time and insights into what is now appears to be the Wild Wild West of weight loss. We will be right back. Stay with us.